Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we are going to cover two AIT's problems related to collisions. So this is the first problem and in this question we have a ball of mass m that is moving with a velocity of v0 at an angle of 37 degree with the vertical. It, it collides with the block A and gets stuck to it as shown in the figure. The mass of each block A and B is 2m. The coefficient of friction between the blocks A and B is is mu1 and between the blocks B and horizontal is mu2. So these two surfaces have different friction coefficients and we have to determine the velocity of A and B after collision. Okay, so give this problem a good try guys and then check out the solution. Okay guys, so this is the situation before collision and this is the situation after collision. So before collision, the ball had a velocity of V0 at an angle of 37 degrees. Uh, and after collision, it's given that the ball gets stuck with the block a and let's say they combinedly move with some velocity of va so we have to determine this va first of all so we have to first detect all the impulsive forces on the system okay so first we have to choose a system in which we can apply impulse momentum theorem and a good option looks like the system containing this block a and this ball because we know the momentum before and after collision for this system after collision they both move with the velocity of va let's come to these blocks a bit later so let's focus on this block a okay so now while this ball is colliding with the block what's happening so let's say that time interval is from t1 to t2 so this is the time interval for which collision happens which means this is the time interval for which all the impulsive forces acts on the system so what's happening is as this ball pushes hard on the block, the normal from the surface on the ball is going to be impulsive, which means, and now as the normal is impulsive, the friction force that is going to decelerate the ball will also be impulsive. So now if you just look at this block A over here, as this normal is impulsive, normal reaction between block A and block B, even this is going to be impulsive, which means even this friction force over here between these two surfaces will also be impulsive. So now let's mark down the forces. So on the block A, so let's say this normal reaction force is N1 and the friction force along the surface is F1. So now in our system guys, the only impulsive force in the horizontal direction is this friction over here. So we can say that integral of f1 dt from t1 to t2 while the collision is happening this is the impulse due to friction this is equal to the final momentum of the system so the entire system is moving with the velocity of va finally so the final momentum is 3m va in the i cap direction minus the initial momentum of the system it is initially only this block had momentum so the initial momentum is going to be m v0 sine 37 so now we have to if we want to figure out va we need the value of the impulse due to friction as the friction is going to be kinetic in nature guys because the surfaces are going to slip right so i can write f1 as mu times of n1 so i can write f1 as mu times n1 dt so now if you observe the block a guys while collision is happening we know that this normal force over here is going to be impulsive right which means this n1 is also going to be impulsive now if you draw the real fbd then n1 would be equal to this n this normal force n plus the weight of this mass A, which is 2mg, right? But because these two normals are impulsive, we can ignore the gravity force, which basically means the impulse due to these two normal reactions are the same. Okay, so now we have to determine the in impulse due to normal reaction. And that is very easy to determine if you observe our ball. So initially it had a momentum of mv0 cos 37 in the downward direction. And then impulsive normal acted on it in the vertically upward direction. And finally, its vertical momentum became zero, which means I can directly write integral of n dt in terms of magnitude is equal to m v0 cos 37. Now v0's value is actually 50. So if you substitute, it is coming out to be, it'll come out to be 40 m. So now as we have figured out integral of n dt, we can substitute it back into our, you know, horizontal impulse equation. So that was mu1 times integral n dt, which is going to be 40 m. And guess the direction of frictional impulse in the minus i cap direction. So so you have to put a minus i cap over here and this would be equal to 3m va m v0 sine 37 which is which is going to be 30m in the i cap direction so now if you compare on both sides va comes out to be 10 minus 14 to 0 0.1 would be 4 so this would be 6 meters per second in the rightward direction so the final velocity of the system of this ball and mass a is actually 6 meter per second and that would be our option a. So now let's talk about, so now we have to determine the block B's velocity. Okay guys, so in block B, the forces are uh, friction from the top, which was F1, but in the block B, it is going to be in the opposite direction. 
and then we have impulsive normal n1 and then we have impulsive normal from the ground which let's just say it's n2 now as the block is going to slip towards the right the friction from the ground is going to be towards the left and it's going to be impulsive let's call it as f2 so now let's say the block b gains some velocity vb towards the right after collision so now we can easily write the impulse equation right so the impulse due to f1 minus the impulse due to f2 would be equal to the mass of b which is 2m into the velocity of b now guys integral of f1 dt is nothing but this term over here right so let's just write it over here so now i'm not going to use uh, the vector sign because i can see how this is adding and subtracting pretty easily now integral of f2 dt is going to be mu2 times integral of n2 dt again using similar logic integral of n2 dt would be the same as integral of n1 dt because we can ignore, ignore the weight of the block during the course of collision okay which means this is simply going to be minus mu1 times integral of now integral of n1 dt we determined it was equal to 40 m right so I'm going to directly write it over here and this should be equal to 2m times vb and after solving this equation you'll obtain vb as 4 meter per second which is option c so now let's move on to the next question now guys before watching the solution to this problem I want you guys to try this problem out you know for a while because if you if you guys have never done this problem then there's a high chance that you're going to make an error you'll make a mistake in this problem and it will be fun to watch the solution if you actually give it a try first so after giving it a try watch the solution guys so in this question we have a solid sphere uh, we have a rotating solid sphere whose omega is given it's it's actually 5 v naught divided by 4 r and it has an initial velocity of v naught and collides with a plank that is kept on a smooth ground over here coefficient of restitution for this collision is given to be 0.5 and the friction coefficient between the sphere and the plank is given to be 0.5 as well so then we have to answer these questions okay guys so again like the previous problem the first step is to mark down all the forces so clearly uh, initially this had some angular velocity of omega so just before colliding our sphere had an had a velocity of v naught and an angular velocity of omega naught and let's say guys after collision the sphere rebounds with a velocity of v dash now this v dash i can easily write because the coefficient of restitution is given over here so v dash is going to be e times v naught right because e, e is nothing but the ratio of the separation velocity divided by the approach velocity between these two surfaces okay so from here v dash is nothing but half of v naught so it is going to rebound with a velocity of v naught by 2 so uh, again but okay so now if you if you observe the bottommost point of the sphere over here it has a velocity towards the left so clearly this point uh, once it may you know comes into contact with the plank is going to slip towards the left which means friction will act towards the right on the sphere. So let's mark the friction forces. So Fk will act towards the right on the sphere and will act towards the left on the plank. No, and then there'll also be normal force N acting on the sphere. We can apply impulse momentum equation in the y direction for this sphere over here. So the change in momentum, which is going to be m v naught by 2 j cap, which is the final momentum in the y direction minus the initial momentum is mv naught in the minus j cap direction and this would be equal to the impulse due to normal so the only impulsive force in the vertical direction is this normal reaction over here this will be equal to the impulsive impulse due to normal which is integral of n dt and from here jn actually comes out to be which is the impulse due to normal reaction comes out to be 3 by 2 mv naught j cap so in the next step so jf which is the impulse due to friction on this ball is going to be integral of f dt which you guys would have written integral of mu times integral of n dt this is equal to the change in momentum in the x direction so in the x direction initially velocity of the center of mass was zero and finally it gained a velocity of vx which means it is equal to m vx right now this is where the mistake actually happened now integral n dt may or may not be equal to this 3 by 2 mv naught in this case and i'll explain why so kinetic friction the force itself generates because of slipping right because of slipping between these two surfaces so initially as you might imagine this sphere was slipping towards the left so kinetic friction act towards the right so now what this kinetic friction actually does is that it is accelerating the center in the rightward direction and it is also decreasing the omega so there might be some time let's say time t equal to t star which belongs to t1 comma t2 which, so if i say at some time t equal to t star between the collision time the slipping between these two surfaces actually stop which means the sphere starts pure rolling on the plank so basically if pure rolling starts at time t equals t star then the thing is impulse due to friction is going to be integral of mu and dt this you can still write but the time will be from t1 to t star and not till t2 because after t star the sphere starts rolling 
which means there is no need for friction anymore as these two points are not slipping anymore. So that is the mistake that you guys actually made. So now it's not really a mistake because there might be another case in which friction acts throughout. So there might be another case in which fi friction acts throughout the collision time and that we can only find out by solving equations. And uh, so most of you guys might have actually took this assumption that friction acts throughout and solved it. So now let's try to solve it with, with this assumption. Okay. So now before solving with that, let's just try to figure out the impulse due to friction in this particular case. Okay. So let's try to figure that out. So the JF in this particular case that if friction was acting throughout, then it is simply going to be integral of mu n dt and the time is from t1 to t2. And this just comes out to be mu j n, which is nothing but three by four m v naught. So this would have been the impulse provided friction was acting throughout. Okay, so now let's assume that pure rolling started at some intermediate time. So at some intermediate time, let's just assume the angular velocity is omega and the center's velocity is v. And we don't really care what happens in the vertical direction, as you'll see in a bit. But the thing is, even this plank will have some velocity. So let's call it v p. So, uh, so now let's just apply the no slip condition at this particular point. So here the velocity, so the sphere's velocity towards the left is going to be omega r minus v and that should be equal to the Planck's velocity towards the left. So we can say omega r minus v equals vp. Now guys, how do we relate v and vp? So v and vp we can easily relate by taking the entire thing as a system because there is no horizontal forces on the system, right? The ground is smooth. So as there is no horizontal force, Px for the system is conserved. So I can say 4m times Vp would be equal to m times V. And from here we get Vp equals V by 4. And from here we get omega r equals 5V by 4. Okay, so out of the three variables that we have, omega, V and Vp, we have figured we need one more relation to relate omega and V. And for that, we are going to use angular momentum conservation. Okay, so now angle and for angular momentum conservation, we need to choose a point. We have to choose a point either as a center of mass or a fixed point, which is not accelerating. Okay, or a point that is not accelerating. So, and the best point I think is going to be, let's say this is a sphere, which is uh, at the point of contact, but, uh, but fixed. It's not a point that is attached to the sphere or the plank. It is a point that is like flying in the air, let's say. And the reason for choosing this is because, is because friction and normal directly passes through this point. There is no torque, right? So about this point, I can conserve the angular momentum for the sphere. The L about P guys, it is going to be, is going to be M, RCM cross VCM, so plus angular momentum of the body relative to the center of mass. Okay, so this is how we write the angular momentum, right? Initially, as you can see, uh, there is only one velocity. The velocity of the center of mass passes through the point P. So there won't be any component due to that. So the only component is due to the rotation of the sphere. So the initial angular momentum is going to be simply I omega naught. The direction, guys, it is going to be into the plane, right? And finally, what is going to happen is, as you guys can see, it has gained a horizontal velocity of V. So if you do MRCM cross VCM, M, V multiplied by this distance R, R cross V, you'll obtain that the direction is into the plane as well. So the finally, it is going to be M, V, R. Now, and the I omega is still going to be into the plane itself. So I omega. So this is the angular momentum conservation equation. Okay, so now after solving this equation with this equation over here, then you'll obtain that omega is actually omega naught by three. And omega naught itself was five V naught divided by four R. So after substituting, this is the value of omega that we get. Okay, so now you can also determine V. Now V was four fifth of omega R, which comes out to be V naught by three. So now we can also figure out VP, which is some uh, simply omega R minus V, which comes out to be V naught by 12. So now we have determined everything. Okay, so now the thing is, now he, this is important guys. So, so in this particular assumption, so we took the assumption that the ball starts rolling before the collision ends, right? So let's say it starts rolling at some time T star that lies between T1 and T2. So we can say the impulse due to friction in this case is integral of FK dt from T1 to T star. And this would be equal to change in momentum, right? So the change in momentum, if you guys observe, is nothing but m into v right is nothing but m into v because initially there was no horizontal momentum for the sphere so if you do mv it comes out to be m v naught by 3. okay guys so now if you observe uh, on the left we have the impulse due to friction in the case where rolling begins before the collision ends and on the right impulse due to friction assuming that rolling does not begin before the collision ends so from here we can easily see that the jf for the rolling case is clearly less than the JF for the slipping case. So this essentially just means that the ball started rolling at some intermediate time T star, 
okay Impa the assumption to the right that it slips throughout is actually wrong and after it started rolling guys friction would just leave the scene and and the horizontal velocity and the omega of the disc will remain unchanged afterwards but normal is impulsive normal is still acting and it will keep on accelerating the cm in the vertical direction the, the friction will leave the scene so finally what will happen is so if i want to draw the final situation over here the sphere will have a horizontal velocity of v angular velocity of omega which we determined vertical velocity of v naught by 2 so this is the situation in the final case and as impulsive friction stops acting even this plank will stop accelerating after achieving a velocity of vp and VP we determined was V0 by 12. So now if you observe the options, velocity of the plank is V0 by 12, correct. The impulse due to friction is MV0 by 3, that is also correct. The angular velocity is 5V0 by 12, or, so that was A option. The answer to this problem is ACD. So that was it for this problem, guys. If you enjoyed the video, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. And that's it. Thanks for watching.